Hello and welcome in the next part of the Angular series. Today I would like to show you how to make HTTP calls from the Angular application to the REST web service. We will call endpoints from the Java web service which I have created in one of my videos. You can see that uh, the endpoints which service is exposing is basically a simple crude so we have the option to get all students we have the option to get the particular student and also we can create new student update existing one and delete if he fails exam for example okay so let's start with generating new angular project so we want to type ng new we want to name our application for example the rest call app and now we want to set styles to scss we want routing so we use the routing flag and we type true and also we want to set the prefix for our components to codeforge okay and we are hitting enter and we are waiting for our project to generate okay so application is ready so let's navigate to the directory so we cd to rest all up and we want to open it in the code okay so as we can see over here we have the routing already the default styles is scss and also let's check if we have the prefix correct yes it's cf so it's great now let's start our application so i will open the terminal and let's ng serve okay so as you can see our application is up and running on the local host 4200 now we can create a service which will allow us to call the endpoints from our web service first i will open the console over here and we will type ng generate s which stands for service and now we want to create a directory that will be called services and inside we want to create student service and we hit enter and after a moment we will get the services directory and inside we will get the student service so in our service we will have several methods which will allow us to call the web service endpoints first method will be calling the api all students endpoint which will return the entire collection of the students from the database at the first place we want to create a read-only property which one will store the url of our web service so we type read only and the property name will be service url and we want to assign to it a string which will be http localhost on the port 8080 and this is the url where our service is available now we want to inject the http client dependency to our service but before that we have to go to our app module and over here we have to import http client module so at the top of our module we type import http client module and we have to import it from angular slash common slash http and now we can use this http client module and import it to our module by passing it to the imports array over here okay so let's save it and let's go back to the service thanks to that now we have access to the http client so we can inject it in the constructor of our service so we type private we'll call it http and it will be http client and we don't want to import it from the selenium as you can see over here but from the common http okay great now we need a simple data structure which will represent the response from the web service 
So we right click on the app directory. We click the new folder and let's call it models. And now inside of the models, let's create a new file which will be called student.ts like this. Now inside this file, we want to type export because we want this interface to be available outside. It will be of course interface because we don't need complex object and we will name it student. Now we can go to the Swagger UI and check which properties our student should have. And we can check it inside of the models tab over here. So it will have first name, ID and the last name. So in our interface we want to type ID and it will be number. After this, oh, it should be semicolon. After this, we want first name and it will be, of course, string. And the last name and it will be also the string. So let's save it. And now we are ready to use this student interface in our service. So let's go back over here and also let's jump here. And also I will close this console over here. Okay, so now we will create a method, which one will call this get all students uh, endpoint. So we go under the constructor and over here we type public. Okay, and we will name our method get all students. Empty parentheses and curly braces. Okay, inside our method, we want to use return keyword. And by referencing to this class, we want to access HTTP object. And this object is uh, exposing several methods. One of them is get method, which we will use. And we want to use get method because the get all students endpoint is using get HTTP method, right? Okay. As the argument of the get method, we have to pass this service URL, but also we have to specify which endpoint we want to call. So in our case, it will be slash API slash all students. So over here, we will also add slash API slash all students. Okay. Let's add semicolon at the end and format the code. One more thing we can do is defining the type which our method will return. So we have to go over here and after the colon, we have to type observable because we are returning the observable. And this is the generic type. So inside we are passing our student interface, which will be the array because this, uh, this will be the collection. And now we got the error because we also have to specify the type over here. So we have to type student array and now it's okay. Now we can save it and we can use our service in one of the components. So let's go to the default component over here. And first thing we have to do is to create the constructor and inject our service. So we type constructor and in the parentheses, we can type private student service which will be the type of student service and it is also imported over here great i will clean it a little bit now let's say we want to fetch all the students when our component is created for that we will use the ng on init lifecycle method at first, to use it, we have to implement the onInit interface. And now we can create ngOnInit method in our component. Now, inside this method, we can call this student service. And inside this student service is leaving our method, which will allow us to fetch all the students. So we are calling this method and now to actually make, to make a request, we have to subscribe to this method like this. Subscribe method 
accepts callback function as the argument so we will use arrow function and here will be passed our student collection or maybe let's say students okay and over here inside this callback function we already have access to our students collection so let's create the property in our component which will store the array of the students so let's say it will be students and uh, it will be the type of student but it will be the array and we will assign null to it like this and now we can reference to our class property students and assign to it students collection like this also let's format the code and add miss missing semicolon over here okay great you can see that we got an error get all students method does not exist on type student service but if we restart the application and run it one more time it should fix this problem so let's wait a second and yes after restart now it's okay i have already saved changes so we can go to our application and open the console over here we can see that we have an error and the warning and this is because our service is not accepting requests from our local host 4200 and this is the problem with the service what we can do now is go to our web service and enable the course policy to allow request from this origin or if you are working in the team ask the backend guys to do it for us because otherwise our application cannot communicate with the web service i will go now to the student service and i will add the course configuration to it and you can check it out in one of my videos i have added the course to our student controller and as you can see there is no error right now so now we should be able to console log our students collection so let's do it and over here we will display the students collection okay and now after saving we can see that we have an array of the students from the database great so let's actually display this list instead of this angular welcome page so first let's delete this console log and let's jump to the view okay and over here we want to get rid of this okay so now let's create a list and inside we'll have a lie element and inside of this ally element we want to use ng4 directive to iterate over the our collection of students so we create student variable of students collection okay now inside we can display student data using interpolation so we can use double curly braces refer to the student id now after dash we will display the student first name and also student last name okay then now we can save it and also let's save the class and as you can see there is our list of students great also let's hide the console now we will quickly add bootstrap to our project because it looks ugly and also let's add some classes to our html tags so we will add the list group class to the ul element and also we'll add class to our ally element and its list group item okay and save it okay our get request is working and we have managed to display the data from the service now we want to make a post request 
I have prepared a really simple form which will I paste over here. We have three inputs as you can see, one for ID, one for first name and one for last name. We also have the submit button. And of course, we are listening for the ng submit event and we are passing the, the data from the form to the submit function. Also, we will add the horizontal line over here to separate form from the list. And we will also wrap the list into container like this. And we will add some padding to the top. So we can use the bootstrap class for this. Now we will save the file and we have to jump to the app module. And since we are using the forms, we have to add the forms module. So we have to add this to the imports array and also we have to import it. So we type import, we need the forms module and we want to import it from angular slash forms okay now we can save it and okay it's compiling right now so now let's jump to the class and let's handle the clicking submit button name of our function was submit i believe we'll accept the student object which is this type of student and just in case let's the Let's display the data to check if our form is working. I have already saved. Let's open the console. Let's provide some ID and let's populate the form. And if, if we click add, we can see that we are getting the data. So it's working great. Okay, so we can get rid of this. And now we need a function which will allow us to call one of the endpoints and in our case it will be the post endpoint uh, with this url so we have to jump to the student service we will add a new function over here or method so let's say public add student and carry brace our method, of course, needs an object which will be sent in the body of the post request. So we'll add the student argument. Our service, after creating a new student, will return this new student. So our function will return the observable, which will be the type of the student. Now we want to move to the body of our method and over here we want to return this and now we are using the HTTP client and now we can call the post method instead of get. In the first place we have to provide the URL of the endpoint so we are using our property with the URL of our service and now we want to concatenate the endpoint url so it's the api students so we type slash api slash students second parameter we want to provide is the body of our request and in our case it will be just the student object the third argument is the http options object which one we don't have right now so let's create one we will a read only property which will be http options and this object will have the headers property which we will set to a new http headers object and in the constructor of this object We will pass another object with the property content type set to application slash json and also we need the semicolon over here and we are setting this header to the application json because we are sending the json object in the post request now we can get back to our post method and we can simply pass the HTTP options object like this. 
we still get an error here and this is because we haven't specified the type of the post request like we did in the get request so we have to pass student over here and this is the way how we would like to make a request to the service which is interpreting the body of the request unfortunately our service is not interpreting the payload or the body so we have to slightly change it in the first place we will get rid of the student object and we will use the empty one because our service is not using it anyway and thanks to swagger we can actually check what we need in the url so we go to the post we click the try it out and we can see that we need the first name query parameter and also the last name query parameter right so we have to extend our url over here so we want to provide the parameters after the question mark and first will be first name and after equal we want to concatenate the student first name and now we want to concatenate again and we want to use the ampersand and we want to type last name equal sign and concatenate the student last name okay you can see that the first approach was much cleaner than this one but we can also make it better by using es6 syntax so let's do it so we will wrap everything into the backticks like this and now we will get rid of these things over here okay and also this one i believe and now we will use the string interpolation so we use the dollar sign and the curly braces okay so we want to interpolate this one also typo okay this one and also the last name of the student so it will be this one okay it looks good and also we'll do something like this okay so now it looks a little bit better so let's save it and let's go to the component and make a request so over here we want to use this keyword to reference to the injected student service instance on this student service we want to call our new method which is add student and we want to pass the student object from the form and now to actually make a request we can we have to call the subscribe method one more thing before we make a request we have to go back to the service over here because the backtick notation is interpreting all the white spaces and as you can see we have four spaces over here so we have to delete this actually and now the request should be correct okay so let's save it and let's jump to the application so now we actually can make a request we don't need id because id is automatically generated by the service so we have to provide only the name and the last name and if we make a request and now that we will refresh the site we can see that the johnny wallace with the id 10 has been added to our list and this is actually persisted in the database so it will not disappear if we refresh right now let's say we don't want to refresh the site after adding the student to actually update the list of the students so we have to go back to our component over here in the subscribe method we will provide the callback function because in the response of this request we are getting the created student so we have access to it over here it will be new student and now we can simply push this new student to our collection of students 
So we are accessing the array of our students and we are pushing a new student. Okay, so let's save it. And now let's add a new student. So let's say it will be Scott Adams. We hit the add button and as you can see he's added over here. Great. And if we hit the refresh button, he's still here. So we are sure that he's persisted in the database. Now let's take care of deleting the students. So let's go to the view and over here we will create the buttons. So we will need button with the classes btn, btn danger, because it will be red, btn small, and we want it to float to the right. Okay, and we want the x to display and also we will add the type attribute so it will be button and if we save it and wait a second we will get nice x's over here we also have to add the click event and we want to assign some kind of function to it let's say delete and we want to pass the entire object. We'll use only the ID, but we are passing entire object because why not? So we are saving it and let's create the function over here in the component. So it will be delete and we will get the entire student object, which is the type of the student. Okay, let's check if it works. So we will simply log this object over here. Okay, we save it. We will open the console and we jump to the console. And now if we click the John test, we are getting John test with the ID one. If we click Robert Wilson, we will get Robert Wilson with the ID eight. Great. So it's working. Now we can move to the service and implement the function which will make a request to delete the students. So let's actually copy this one and let's paste it and we will change the add student to delete student and the URL will be correct. Uh, yeah, it will be correct, but we will need only the ID. We will delete this over here we have to add the pactic string interpolation and we want to access student my bad student id okay and we have to change the post method to delete method and of course we don't need a payload over here and now it's good. So let's save it and let's move to the component. Okay, over here we will delete this console log and we will use this student service and this time we will use delete student method and we will pass student object. And now of course we will subscribe. Let's check if it works. So we are saving the file. We go to our application. And now, for example, we can try to delete join test with ID one. So we click the cross button. And now if we refresh, it disappeared from the list. So again, we don't want to refresh the site. So now we will use the callback function. Over here we will have the access to deleted student. So let's say deleted student. Now we want to access our array of students. So we type these students. And to this array, we want to assign this students array, but we want to filter it. As the argument of the filter function, we will pass arrow function. And the argument of this function will be 
current student and now we want to check if the current student id is different than the deleted student id okay and the semicolon at the end we will filter our entire students array and return all the students except the one we have deleted okay so let's check it out i will save the file and now let's click the scott adams and as you can see it's disappeared and if we refresh it's not here so our function is working okay now we will take care of updating the student so let's go to the student service and over here we will create a new method first let's take a look on our endpoints so we go over here we hide this one and we want to check put method and trade out and as you can see we need three parameters right now we need first name id and the last name and of course we need id because we have to know which student we want to update so i think we can copy the add student method paste it over here and now we have to change several things first is the name of the method we will change it to edit student now we will go and change the post method to put method and also we have to add another parameter and it will be id and we'll use the string interpolation again and we will refer to the student id and between the parameters we have to use the ampersand and we are getting an error because this line is quite long okay so our rest call method is ready let's format the code and let's save it and let's go to the view okay over here we want to create a new form because we can assign only one function to the form first let's copy this form and paste it over here and let's format it a little bit uh, over here in the create form we don't need the id right now okay and the first form is calling submit function and the second one will call the edit function now we will create two buttons which will allow us to control which form we want to display so i will paste some code over here and as you can see we have two simple buttons and one is calling toggle adding function and the second one is calling toggle editing function we will control our forms by adding ng if and we will be checking the boolean property and let's say we will call this boolean property is adding toggled and we will do exactly the same for the second container of the form um, but we will change the property to is edi editing toggled a small type over here okay now we can save it and we can go back to our component okay over here we want to add two properties first one will be is adding toggled and we will set it to false and we'll do exactly the same for is editing toggled and we will set it to false by default okay so let's save it and check it out so we have our list and we have two buttons but when we click them nothing happens and this is because we don't have any logic to control the these two variables we are using in this ngif directives so let's add them first function was toggle adding and we don't need any parameters and by clicking toggle adding we want to change the value of is adding toggled to true and we want to change is editing toggled to false okay we will do exactly the same for 
toggle editing so we copy this and we'll change the name and we will simply replace this assignment over here so over here will be true and this one will be false and now we can save it and now if you click the adding button we have the adding form and if you click the editing we have the second one we can also add some headers over here and we have to change the add button to edit button so let's do it so in the view in the second form we want to change the add to edit and also we want to add the headers so let's say it will be h3 editing and over here we want to add also h3 but adding okay and let's save it and let's check it out it's okay and this is also good okay so finally you can make a request so we go back to our component and over here we have to add another function and it will be edit as before we will get the student object which is type of student and in the body of our function we want to call the student service and we want to call the edit student method as the argument of the edit student method will pass the student object and we will also subscribe okay so now we can save it wait for application to reload and we can try to edit let's say will miller so we click the edit button and will miller has id 3 and we will rename him to bob smith and we click the edit button and if we refresh we got the bob smith as you can see over here okay then so now let's make it work without refreshing the site so first of course we will make use of the callback function over here with the edited student argument because our service is returning this information now we will copy the logic from the delete method we made and we we'll change the deleted student to edited okay and now we can simply push our edited student to the array of the students so this student push edited student okay so let's save it and now let's say we will edit the Bob Smith and we will rename him to Steve Rose and if we click the edit button he is now Steve Rose great okay guys it's all for today remember about liking and subscribing i hope making a rest calls from the angular application will not be a problem anymore and see you next time